Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is actor hidden in game? Let's go ahead and run through this quick little example. I hit execute. I spawn in an actor, which consists of three items. I hit execute again. It's going to hide the whole actor. And execute again will flip back to unhiding it. Now, you may be thinking this is very similar to setting the visibility, and you would be correct. The difference is what hidden in game is used for. Hidden in game is generally used for things like debugging and where you want to be able to see something when editing. However, you don't want to see it when you're actually playing. Maybe you have some sort of signs to developers or signs for to-do lists, things like that. To-do list would actually be a very good example of this. You make something that contains some text, you sprinkle it throughout your level for a level designer for notes, but when you're playing you may not want them to see it to distract them, so you have it set to hidden in game. So what is hidden in game in terms of what we're talking about? Well, if you have an actor, you have the actor hidden in game option, which is what we're talking about here. If you have a scene component, you have the individual rendering scene component hidden, hidden in game, and that's covered in a different video. If I was to want to see this in here for reference, maybe it's for size or for scale, but I don't want to see it when I'm playing, I might have to set the visibility inside of the game itself. However, if I was to go out to my actor and check actor hidden in game, you'll notice the shadows disappeared. If not, let's look at that again. The engine is being told this item is not going to be rendered when we're playing, so therefore shadows no longer count. We hit play, and the item has gone. Now I am running into the item. Collision is still here. All it's doing is changing the visibility. Something that's important to keep in mind. If you have collision, you might want to go ahead and disable all of your collision. So now it won't even look like the, assuming I stay on the platform, it won't look like the, the item is even there. However, once we're out of it, boom, the item's back. Now, why, why might we want to use this actual node during gameplay? Maybe for debug purposes again. We have these nodes. You have someone playing through the game, and you get to a point where they're like, oh, this looks weird. This texture's in the wrong place. I have a floating mesh. Something's wrong here. You have a debug key hooked up. They push it. Anything that was set to hidden in game is now no longer hidden and they can see the notes that were left for the developer. So when we're looking inside of our blueprint itself, it's pretty simple. We have the set actor hidden in game note. The target's an actor. If we type in actor hidden in game, we're not going to find it. It is context sensitive because it needs an actor and it's under the rendering section. It takes in an actor for a target. So pretty much anything you can plug in. And you have a toggle for yes or no. Hide it or don't hide it. So it's pretty simple. I'll hook it back up. And all I'm doing here is toggling with a flip-flop, hidden state on or off. That's pretty much it. That's going to wrap up this node. The set actor hidden in-game node is intended to hide things only when you're in the game, but keep it visible in the editor. So you don't have to do anything special, such as toggling things that are for debug. That is what this node is for. It's for basically hiding things for debug purposes or other purposes in the game only, not during the editor.